Hello, you're here for, with uh, Mark the Artist um, and I'm coming to you from my studio headquarters in Stoke which is like, you know, basically it's my castle grey school. So, welcome! And, um, uh, sorry if I keep scratching my nose, it's itchy. Hopefully I've not got a cold, got this, not got this cold coming on that everyone's got, but, you know, never mind if I have. Right, so um, today uh, I've got some canvases that have been damaged. Now these tend to get damaged because people don't know how to stack canvases or they get damaged in transit. I generally get people to give me their damaged canvases, so I've got a couple here. This has got like a very small dent in it. Now the way canvases get damaged is when people stack them, they stack them into corner into corner. Never do that. When you always make sure that your canvases are lined up at the edge when you stack them and in theory you're supposed to go face to face I use a piece of um, uh, foam board between each canvas if, if, if it's a finished painting um, but I might play a bit fast and loose if it's an unpainted canvas so uh, I've got the Windsor and Newton so this is my technique for um, repairing a damaged canvas and it might be a bit different to a standard technique but it's what I do, so that's quite good old Windsor and Newton. They're quite good quality canvases. Canvases, so the plastic's good quality. You can actually cut it. You can't just poke your finger through it. So let's uh, let's get into this one. So uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me. All right, throw those out of shot. There we go. Right, okay, so there we have the, this little bit going on here. This is, this is really good, actually. Mm. I've got some spare canvas as well, so in theory I could just keep the board and stretch a new canvas over it, but that would defeat the point of the video. So, what I do, just been over to B&Q and bought some rather expensive joint and tape. Everything nowadays is, is, is ridiculous. Spent like 20 quid on tape. But, you know... I don't usually get the bright orange stuff, so hopefully that won't um, ruin it, <laughs> ruin the project. <laughs> but that's all they had, so. Okay, so I've got some, uh, get my canvas out. Now, if you wanted to sort of joint it, like joint it up, I suppose, ah, probably should have had a knife ready as well. Yeah, I should have had a knife ready. I'm gonna get a knife. Well, I'll let my knife out, so I've got to use a craft knife. There we go. Nothing like being prepared, and this is nothing like being prepared. So, just cut that off, throw the end bit away. Now, what I like to do, if it's a big gouge like that, um, because of the way I'm working, I'm going to repair it from both sides. So, bearing in mind, I do paint texture in a textured fashion. Um, if you don't, this might be not suitable for you. Um, but seems to work for me. I mean, I've slashed canvases to start them off, get them started, because, you know, if you're using a lot of washers, it can channel the wash into the back of the canvas. So, I'm just jointing that on the back, you can see there. Um, yeah, so you, you, this is just uh, the um, jointing tape, if you're not familiar um, with it, this is jointing tape that you can get from any sort of DIY shop, it's for um, plasterboards, it's on the walls of your house, uh, just underneath the wall and then essentially you just plaster over it so I've done the back just cut two squares to size now depending on if you want some texture on the front you can just sort of fill that but it's still going to be a bit a bit loose I mean because I'm working in a textured fashion I'm just going to throw some joint tape on the front as well and see what wonders we can create later on possibly many there we go so it's got a little bit there. Uh, well, you know, if I was if I was more contemporary, I'd just put that on as a, an art piece. It's like, oh, this is has some meaning to it. I call it jointing. Right. Okay. So, but I'm not. I have to paint everything. To me, it's not art if it's not finished. It's not finished. 
but that's just me. But and the modernists. And then um, yeah, so we have a bit of that on there. Now we're still the integrity is still going to be a bit compromised there, um, but it's okay because I'm going to layer it up. So uh, that's the small piece. Uh, well, that's the, the the small oblong piece with its damaged massively. And this is the not so damaged piece like that. Oh, these little things that come with the canvas. If you don't know what they are, don't throw them away. I think I've got another video that you can that tells you what they are and how to use them. But, so I'm not going to put that on this video because that would defeat the point. Right. So this one, I'm just going to do it in a bit more delicate fashion. So I'm only going to I'm only going to fill this one from one side. Uh, yeah, joint it from one side, which is from the back. Just to hold the texture together. Now that that might be suitable. That method may just be suitable for somebody who's uh, not doing textural painting. And you can see I've just repaired that from the back. And you can add a bit of filler to the back if you want. But for this, I'm probably not. So I'm just using today. I'm just using a palette knife. Uh, you can use a trowel if you want. Build a trowel, whatever. Now I'm using uh, ready mix gypsum um, cement. Uh, which uh, joint and cement, um, which I don't think they make anymore. They've changed. They definitely changed the recipe. I got this. This is quite old. So essentially, I'm just um, working some filler into the tape, which is pretty easy. And you can obviously you can keep working filler in and adding layers. Uh, you might not necessarily want to use industrial building materials like I do. Uh, but that's kind of part of my theme anyway, so you know, I make a lot of industrial stuff. So yeah, how are you guys getting on, audience, um, sports fans? So I've been to the gym today, that was fun. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, I always like to go to the gym in the morning, because little tip, if you're quite creative and you pick your own hours, you might find that it's better starting later on and working later because if you are right brain dominant uh, now this was a tip given to me by Fred Phillips um, and he's a really good artist and he's, he's been working for many many years um, in Chicago and he said to me um, once uh, that he like that if you start later if you're right brain dominant because it takes longer for your motor skills to engage so I'm just going with what he says. Don't criticise me. Don't shoot the messenger. You know, I mean, if you want to shout at me and say, no, you're just being lazy. It's like, no, I'll just start late. I'll work late. You know, works for Fred. So hopefully it works for me. Right. So there we go. So I've just layered it up with a single layer of um, filler there, you see. Um, and I'm going to work back into that later. Once that's dry, put some more filler on top of that. Um, uh, this one probably doesn't need it. You can, I could probably paint straight into that. Um, I can fill it. I can back. I can fill it from the back, which I may do. I'll have to think about it. Um, yeah, and so hopefully that's a really useful thing if you've got some canvases that have got damage and you don't want to throw them away. Uh, once that dry, well, that's dry, I'm going to coat it up with some primer um, and uh, possibly a bit more texture. I mean, just just watch it. You know, don't don't um, once you've got all your paint and uh, stuff. You know, once you've actually made the painting, don't mess it around too much because obviously it's it's being held together with by wishes and promises. So you know, just be careful. All right, that was uh, my little tutorial, um, and I have been listening to feedback and people telling me off and like, well, aren't you going to explain what you're doing? So today I probably over-explained. Uh, but I hope it's useful for some of you, all right? So get that on the plaster and aisle. Well, something similar, not that exact recipe. Um, it's quite flexible joint fill. I found it to be quite useful. But then again, I coat everything up in resin anyway. Uh, and that, down the same aisle, much joint and tape. You know, but obviously if you go to B&Q in um, Stoke-on-Trent and say, if you've got any joint and tape, they'll look at you with a very blank expression. What that? Because, uh, you know, I don't feel like a lot of those guys have worked in the trade. 
Anyway, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you soon. And this is quite a long video, so, um, you know, thank you if you watched it all the way to the end. Take care, and like and subscribe.